Hey everyone, my name is Christine Javier and today I'm going to work on FreeCodeCamp's Return Largest Numbers in Arrays algorithm. Um, in this algorithm, what you get is an input of one array, and this array consists of subarrays, four subarrays to be exact. And each subarray contains unordered numbers. So the goal of this challenge is to return one array that consists of the largest numbers of each subarray. All right, and so forth. So the cool thing about this challenge is that um, you get the opportunity to explore a lot of different avenues. And I think that's that holds true for any of these free code camp algorithms. But this one in particular, for me, like it, I felt like I had just so many different options. And uh, today I'm going to provide you with two solutions that I really liked. So a goal I have. Um, as of recently in the past few weeks is to really tackle my JavaScript algorithms using a lot more methods and to really avoid using for loops and else if statements. I'm, I'm just looking for sleekness. I'm looking for complexity. I'm looking to learn more about the way the JavaScript engine parses. And by exploring how to use methods, I feel that I've gotten a lot more experience understanding how the JavaScript engine works. All right, so uh, done with that spiel. Um, let's go ahead and work in the text editor. So the first, um, the first solution I came up with is has to do with this concept. My strategy was that I was going to sort out the figures of each array. Um, from there, I was going to um, pinpoint exactly the largest numbers and splice those out. And then from there, those are going to be just four individual subarrays with just a few, with just one number in each array. And from there, I was going to flatten out the, the arrays. So this solution required my use of for each, uh, splice, sort, and reduce, which was really cool. All right, I'm going to go and get started on that then. So Again, the first goal I have in mind is to uh, sort each one in order. All right, so I'm just going to set r equal to r dot, um, let's see, actually, I'm just going to do r dot for each, and this one's going to take in a function, and it's going to be um, uh, r1. That's just going to represent the r array arguments. Cool. And from there, I just want to sort that out. So I'm going to do return r1.sort. And I want to sort this in order of the sort's going to take in a function that takes in two parameters. Now, from here, I'm just going to return um, a minus b and see. Let's go see how that looks like right now. 13, 26. Okay, so it is going in order, but it's going in ascending order. So I'm just going to switch the two around. I want the larger numbers at the beginning of the array. Great. So as you can see, we have four subarrays. Each subarray is now ordered in descending order, such that you get um, the larger numbers at the very front, which is exactly what I wanted. So that's cool. Um, now let's see. So from here, I want to splice that out. I want to splice um, the last three elements out of these arrays. So I'm going to do something, I'm going to do the same thing, r dot for each. And sorry to have skipped this, but for each, all it does is it iterates through the each element of the array and it applies a callback function to each element of the array. So what I'm writing here is an anonymous function that acts as the callback function. R1 is just an argument that represents every single element that's going to be put into this function. And all I'm doing here is I'm adding an anonymous function, again, into the sort method. Um, and this anonymous function goes to each every single each and every single one of these subarrays, and it just orders it. Um, in descending order. So that's where we're at right now. And again, I'm going to use the uh, the for each method because we still have, I still want to, you know, iterate through every single element of the array and apply a callback function to each of them. And in this callback function, 
This is going to take an R1 again. You could change the argument names. That doesn't matter. Um, now let's see. I'm just going to uh, splice out uh, those last three elements of each array. Return R1.splice. And the way splice works is it takes in two arguments. The first argument represents the, the positional value of the element you want to start the splice at. So because I'm trying to isolate the zero with element, I want to start at the first element here. One. And then the second argument represents the number of how many characters you want to splice out. So I want to take in one, two, and three. All right. There we go. Now I'm going to run this. And the way it should look like is just individual arrays containing just the largest numbers. Perfect. So that works. Um, cool. Last step. We have just these subarrays. Now we could use something called reduce, um, which would then, what reduce does is, you know, and this is kind of intuitive, something that really uh, was like a mind explosion when I, <laughs> when I really, when I connected the dots, but reduce takes in several, um, several arguments and it reduces it to one figure. So go figure that, right? And Oftentimes when you want to flatten an array, you want to use the reduce method. So reduce is going to take in a function as well with two inputs, A and B. And again, the, the arguments in these anonymous functions, they don't, it doesn't matter what you title it, whatever is most intuitive to you. So, you know, I'm just going to make that a little easier for us actually, R2. So we now know that we're dealing with two different arrays. What you're going to return here is the concatenation of these two arrays. So this here is going to go through every single element and just concatenate itself with each other. Uh, why did that not work? Return rr. I think it has to be r equals r dot reduce. There we go. So yeah, sometimes uh, you're going to have to cons like write in this sort of thing because of immutability. All right, there you go. Cool, so that works. Let's see if that works in free code camp. And it does, cool. So again, what I really loved about just this solution here was just, it was a challenge to myself because I wanted to make use of these, of these methods here of for each sort, splice, reduce, concat, and not at one point did I write a for loop that was you know, a pretty, and you can, you could solve this, you totally could solve this in the for loop, but I just wanted to, you know, challenge myself and see how I could think of different ways to solve this. And, um, yeah, so that's my first solution. Um, and it's, it's not exactly the best solution. It kind of, it takes a lot of lines, but again, the goal in mind I had was to practice these JavaScript methods. All right. So that's my first solution. Let me just write that in there. Solution one. Cool. So we have that down. Now let's go ahead and work on solution two. Now, um, let's see. What's the function name again? Function largest of four. I'm just going to reset this first. Sometimes free code camp, you know, it's it's a really great side, but you gotta you gotta make sure you reset stuff if you wanna try putting in a new code in. Cool. Alright, so now this time around, I wanted just a cleaner, more simple solution without having to use a for loop again. Um, and what immediately came to mind was math.max. Like that's the easiest way to gain the maximum values from from any array. And that was just the main strategy. Um, and I worked around that using other methods um, like apply and what else did I use? And sort, I believe. Um, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to work on this one. It was kind of a while since I last did this, but let, we can work through it together. <laughs> okay. So let's see, um, the goal I have in mind is, 
let's see. Okay. Ah, okay, I remember. I, I'm i going to declare a, an empty array. I'll call it answer array. And we're just going to push into it the maximum values of the of the subarrays. Okay. So now comes the question of how do we get the maximum values of the subarrays? So let's see. R equals. I'm going to do r dot for each. So again, we're using for each. And um, I'm just going to write a function outside here just to be a little more clean about it. Function biggest num. Now, what's biggest num going to take? It's going to take in just one input array. Input array. <clears throat> And what you're going to want to do here is return um, math.max. Now here's the kicker. You want to use something called apply. Dot apply. Um, and when you use apply, you want to have two arguments. And because we're not using strict mode, this is why you have to do this. You have to start with null. And then your second argument will be the array you're inspecting. So the reason why we have null is because you want to put this in if you're not if you're not caring to point to an object, um, and that's just that has something to do with strict mode. And because we're not using strict mode, let's put in null just so that we clarify to this apply method here that yeah there, we are not pointing at an object. We just want to just get through the array and pick out the largest numbers. Um, I just want to test this function here first, actually. Console biggest num and just make sure that works. Let's see. I'll just take steal an array from here. All right. Let's see. Let's run that. 27. Cool. Uh, ignore that red. It's because I hadn't finished this function here. But that works. It does return the largest number. Cool. So I'm just going to do r dot for each um, biggest num and what I'm going to do is answer dot push that whole thing. I'm pushing into this empty array each biggest number of the subarrays. And I'm simply going to return answer array. So let's see how that looks like. Answer dot push. Oops, answer r. Undefined. Hmm. Let's, let's carefully analyze why that's happening r dot for each biggest num biggest num biggest num input array function biggest array r dot for each um, return math dot max that apply so this works it's something to do with our for each and I'm curious why so I'm gonna go ahead and use something a resource that I really like it's called JavaScript Tutor and it goes through and helps you visualize what exactly is happening when you're parsing your JavaScript code, engine-wise, I should say. So we got 15 steps here. And please forgive this for looking a little unreadable. It's something you get used to, but this is honestly one of the best resources I've found. So it goes step by step, line by line. What's happening? What is the engine actually parsing? And it starts here declaring that empty answer array going to the answer array and pushing into it that r dot for each um, method I included. Put array. So return value is 27, that's good. Now is that being pushed into answer array? And let's see, let me go back one step. Okay, and then, so the issue is, is it's not, it's not, being pushed. So that's the thing. It's not being pushed at the right place. Now, let's go ahead and restructure our code with that in mind. It it goes through the for each method first before it's being pushed into answer R. So what you're going to want to do is um, in here, we're going to want to return the push there. So we're going to do answer dot push. There we go. Now, because of that, let me just localize this function because answer r is declared within largest of four. And because this, 
the scoping of it, it's not going to be reachable here if it's outside. So I'm just going to put that there. Cool. Um, now let's run that again and see what happens. Return answer r. Answer dot push. Answer r dot push. Perfect. So this is kind of bulky and ugly <laughs> um, because I just don't really care to keep it like that. Like, you you know, obviously you want to like make it as nice as possible, maybe doing that. But I'm just going to put this back as just um, as just an anonymous function just for it's a little cleaner to me, at least. So let's just make this an anonymous function. Um, now it's going to. Um, Let's see, input array. Now from here, we're doing answer r dot push. So now we're pushing into it um, the, the callback functions that we're applying to each input array. So we're doing math dot max dot apply. And again, we have to start with null and then we're gonna target the input array. Cool, let's see. And there we go, it's a little cleaner. Let's put that in and see if that works. Perfect. Um, so yeah, that's a, a solution I really liked because here we're still using for each. Um, we're using math.max.apply and we're taking in a concept of uh, the this concept the and the global the global variable there, um, and or I should I should say the global object, and yeah, we're just we're doing that all in like essentially a few lines of code, and it's just really cool because it takes into account really a lot of cool JavaScript concepts, um, and I'm glad I introduced you to JavaScript Tutor, which I love using. I love visualizing what's happening. Okay, so I'm just going to...